So you want to work at Google, huh? Awesome. Just solve this graph problem in 15 minutes, blindfolded, while a panel of engineers stares at your syntax typos. Welcome to coding interviews, where 90% of the stress is trying to remember if binary search uses left less than or equal to right or left less than right. It's not just solving problems, it's a mental decathlon mixed with time pressure and performance anxiety. But despite how ridiculous it can feel, there is a pattern. Oh, and before we start the video, I got some good news for you code heads. I made a Discord server where we can all hang out, share memes, and help each other. So hurry up, join using the link in the description or by scanning this QR code. All right, back to the video. There's a set of tools like a cheat sheet for bosses in a video game. If you know the right ones, the whole thing starts to look a lot less terrifying. Now, don't worry. I'm not about to throw 50 different algorithms at you. This isn't an academic lecture. There are about 10 data structures and algorithms that come up in interviews so often, they should probably be listed in the credits. If you've got these in your mental toolbox, you'll be ahead of most people grinding leet code at 2 a.m. Let's start with the basics, arrays and strings. These are the tutorial level of coding interviews, but make no mistake, they can still trip you up. Think two-pointer problems like reversing a string in place, or sliding window challenges like find the longest substring without repeating characters. These aren't flashy, but they show up everywhere, and they set the stage for deeper questions. Next up, hash maps and hash sets. These are your fast lookup structures. Anytime you need to check for duplicates, count frequencies, or look things up in constant time, you reach for a hash structure. They're the reason you can optimize a brute force on squared problem into a slick on solution. Think two sum, a group anagrams, or top k frequent elements. You'll use them so much you'll start dreaming in key value pairs. Now enter stacks and queues. These are about order and timing. Order! Uh, cheeseburger, please! Stacks are your go-to for backtracking problems like checking for valid parentheses or evaluating reverse polish notation. Queues come into play with breadth-first search or processing items in order, like printing nodes in a tree level by level. You don't realize how many problems rely on these until they smack you in the face. And then there's binary search. It's like the introvert of algorithms, quiet, unassuming, and low on syntax, but secretly a beast. Once you get how it works, you'll start seeing it in places that aren't even sorted arrays. Need to find the first or last position of an element? Find a peak element in a mountain array? You're probably one binary search away from salvation. Recursion and backtracking. You're inside a simulation of a simulation inside a simulation of a simulation inside the matrix. Oh boy. This is where brains start to melt. But they're crucial for solving problems that involve exploring possibilities, like generating subsets, solving end queens, or navigating mazes is like polite brute force. And yes, your stack will overflow the first few times, but that's part of the fun. Next are trees and binary search trees. These pop up constantly in interviews. Traversals, checking balance, finding the lowest common ancestor. These aren't just theoretical, they're practical. Knowing how in-order traversal works in a BST, or how to insert and delete nodes properly, is like being fluent in one of the core dialects of coding interviews. And then we get to heaps, min heaps, max heaps, and priority queues. These are essential when you need to keep track of top K elements, like in streaming data, or scheduling problems where you need to choose the next best task. If you've ever seen a problem that says, return the K largest numbers, a heap is your new best friend. Of course, we can't forget graphs. This is the end game content. Graphs are where things get wild, Courses, prerequisites, pathfinding, island counting. Here you'll need BFS, DFS, and sometimes even Dijkstra's algorithm if things get spicy. If you've ever had to find the shortest path to save the princess, congrats, you've worked with graphs. So there you have it. Those are the 10 essentials. No fluff, no esoteric nonsense. Just the stuff that actually shows up again and again. Master these, and you'll stop panicking during interviews and start recognizing patterns. You won't just survive the algorithm gauntlet, you might even enjoy it or at the very least, confuse your interviewer just enough that they give you the benefit of the doubt. And if you actually want to practice these without sobbing into a whiteboard marker or drowning in 10 browser tabs of leak code solutions that make no sense, you should check out Algo Monster. It is the smartest way to prep for coding interviews built by engineers from Google, Meta, and all the other companies you're secretly trying to impress. Unlike other platforms that just throw leak code problems at you like dodgeballs, Algo Monster teaches you through patterns with a fully structured learning plan that actually makes sense. And their new practice section doesn't just help you grind, it mirrors real interviews so you're not caught off guard when the pressure hits. Plus, they've got flowcharts to help you pick the best algorithm for the problem at hand, templates that give you a ready-to-use structure for your solutions, and even speedrun features for when you're cramming like it's finals week. Head over to Algo Monster using the link in the description to get 20% off, Thank you for sitting through another dumb tech rant.
And if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe to become a fellow Codehead.